Thanks, James. Thanks for letting me out on the bike. <laughs> so this will be a first for me. Um, my first ever ride on the Moto Guzzi. This is the V7 Stone. Thanks to uh, Fraser the Gloucester for allowing me out on their demo bike. So, here we go. First start on the Guzzi. Now, first impressions. Very low seat height. I'll have to flash it up on the screen. I'm not entirely sure how low the seat is, but it's pretty darn low. Right, let's start her up. <laughs> Sounds nice. Hold on, before I carry on. Isn't it? Let's try to check if it was actually air cooled, and uh, indeed it is. <laughs> now, um, like I say, first ever ride on a Gutsy. So I'm not sure what to expect. Although I am somewhat used to riding unusual twin cylinder motorbikes, as I own an R 1250R BMW. Slow down. Now this bike is 853cc, uh, uh, two valve per cylinder, transverse V-twin as you know. Uh, I think the uh, power rating was um, 65 horsepower. Can't quite remember, 6,000 six and something RPM. Not there for performance at the top end at all, but I suspect it might surprise me. As does revving the engine when the bike kind of kicks to the right. <laughs> so some more impressions. I'm Margaret Thatcher. Sorry, that's not a very good impression. Some more impressions. Um, I can't quite, oh actually I can, I can pretty much flat foot it, but the foot pegs and the gear levers kind of getting a little bit of, of the way of me getting my feet down quickly or instantly. I'll take some getting used to, I'm sure it can be done. First surprise. The engine pulls pretty darn well. And yeah, it does seem to fire forward quite nicely on a on a twist of a throttle. What's uh, quite nice is we do have uh, six speeds. So the transmission is uh, modern in that regard. Bit of a click, you know you change gear, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Gets a bit quieter at the box. Aside from the uh, obviously uh, the fact that the engine sticks out from both sides, the bike actually feels quite slim. The whole chassis, the tank slim, the seat's quite slim. Quite a slender machine aside from the older uh, cylinders. First impressions, oh, I've done first impressions, haven't I? One thing I've noticed. <laughs> um, it's a little bit keen to accelerate off uh, off the throttle. Not sure if it's fair to say snatchy yet. Just leaps a bit, like it shovels an extra bit of fuel in as soon as you open the throttle. There is something on this uh, display called a MGCT, <laughs> and unfortunately, I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if I can adjust it. But so far, aside from the uh, slight keenness to accelerate, slightly over keen, uh, in terms of the throttle response to the off to on transition, the engine feels uh, torquey, responsive, and uh, accelerates quite handsomely. <laughs> so let's talk about the ergonomics a little bit on this machine. Very classic standard roadster type riding position. I've got a slight lean forward to the bars. Legs are swept back a little bit below the knee but no more than maybe 10 degrees or so. Like I said it feels quite a small bike, it's quite a low bike. It feels a bit like a bike of another era in as much as um, lots of modern bikes have, have grown in all dimensions in recent years. You think about your Kawasaki Versus, <laughs> your Ver Versailles, 
all your multi-stradas like the 950s they're, they're upper mid-range bikes with not a huge amount of performance but um, they're quite big physically quite imposing machines I like this idea that it's a small bike with a bigger bike performance mind you doesn't quite weigh like a small bike at 218 kilos wet I think it was so I'd prefer if it were lighter but it's not it's very uh, as you pull away and use low revs it's very thumpy you know quite strong punchy vibration but it's low rev so it's not it's not buzzy but then that clears up after about 2000 rpm 2500 yeah the engine then smooths out to a to a degree but uh yeah the feel of the engine working never really goes away nor should it it's a good seat it's a bike with character you should know that you've got a, a big old v-twin between your legs one thing that's pretty wild is how much these mirrors <laughs> i can't even call it vibrate they thump they're being thrown around by the uh, by the vibes and the mirrors clear up until we uh, reach tick over again <laughs> that's quite funny if you're smooth with the throttle then it is not jerky it's doing a, a nice job at trickling along here suspension feels firm you feel a bit of a damping quality there um, However, I do suspect that the forks are fully, uh, <laughs> fully unadjustable. I meant to say unadjustable, not fully unadjustable. One thing I'm struggling to find, though, is a fuel gauge. So I better get some petrol in it, just in case. Okay, unfortunately, I've got to stick this somewhere. Not great. Nice. Look at that. I'm cycling through the various... Um, fuel consumption modes and there's actually four to choose from if you can see that on the camera mirrors are clear now <laughs> now i'm at around 4000 rpm or just under so i'm trying to figure the handling out um again first gutsy first transverse v twin that i've ever ridden and the shaft drive one at that um, can't say the handling feels modern in my experience there was just one quirk I felt uh, I was accelerating off of a roundabout and the front end was not going to come up you know I'm not under power I'm not trying to lift the front but there's still a little side to side twitch at the wobble as I accelerated but I don't think I would have experienced with many uh, modern motorcycles it's kind of, of a characteristic of a maybe of a long and low bike I'm not sure what the steering head angle is like on this one it doesn't look particularly tight it's kind of gives me the impression that someone's trying to make a long bike sporty in terms of its handling with a sharper steering head angle but I'm probably way off base. I expect it's probably like a 27 degree steering angle or something raked out like that. So let's talk about some other stuff. If you can see the dash, hopefully you can. I like the look of it and I like the backlighting. I'm glad it's not that kind of old orange backlighting that you get on some LCD displays. It's kind of a, a white backlight. Looks quite classy, really. I don't really see the point of the Moto Guzzi kind of eagle motif across there unless but well, it wouldn't kind of go down and up with your fuel range or anything would it that would be kind of defeat the object of the uh, of the logo so um, I don't really see the point of that I know I'm on a Guzzi it says it's just below anyway <laughs> in fact they could have put the wing motif there instead probably would have looked a, a little bit classier than just the words Moto Guzzi there but you might argue the the wing motif even extends to the like the change in the moulding for the indicator idiot lights. 
Nice effort, Gussie, nice effort. You are trying, no doubt about that. This bike uh, feels pretty good at short shifting. I think I've just found the, the bike's vocation. It likes being grunted out of corners. That's when you feel the engine being quite alive as well and you're making good progress. Yeah, it feels pretty decent. So, um, interestingly, one of the things on this dash, even though it looks like a you know slightly antiquated dash with its LCD display, it did say pairing request. So you can actually connect your phone to this bike. Not sure the capabilities of the app, <laughs> but uh, it's nice that you can probably get uh, riding data out of the bike and store that on your phone somewhere for future perusal. One thing I do like on my BMW is that it's shaft drive and of course the Guzzi is as well. I don't feel any particular kind of strange characteristics coming out of this bike due to the fact it's shaft drive. Back end doesn't seem to be doing anything particularly strange when you're coming on and off the throttle. Yep, transmission behaviour seems to be uh, well under control. What is that MGCT? I can't adjust it. I can't think of a way of adjusting it. It's not an indicator thing. It's not holding down the mode button. I'm annoyed. I need to find out. Okay. Moto Guzzi. Controllo. Trazione. So actually, I think it's just traction control. <laughs> but how do you adjust it? I don't quite get that. Nowadays, starter buttons have dual duty. So let's start the bike. Let's get to MG... CT. It's on two. What I'm going to do is press the start button. One. Disabled. One, two. Disabled. So we've got two settings there. Or, well, two settings and off. It certainly does not hang about this bike. Oh, there you go. Finally. Okay, yeah. We were we were stable mid corner until we counted a few bumps and again the front end just started to get a little wayward front brake oh yeah hasn't got a lot of bite but it has got some power quite a bit of power there if you grab it, it slows down pretty strongly Can I describe this bike? It feels rather um, not not too firm, not stiff, not uncomfortable, but it, it is on the firm side. Not giving me a lot of confidence through bends. Again, it's kind of that long, low wheelbase kind of uh, sensation, where the front end just doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't quite talk to the rest of the bike. It seems that uh, if you ride at six or seven tenths, there's nothing wrong with the bike at all, <laughs> as long as the roads aren't too bumpy. If you push on a little bit harder than that, this bike becomes a little bit undone, a little bit harder to manage. Right, one quick look around of the Moto Guzzi V7 Stone. Cannot deny that is a handsome looking, classically styled machine. I uh, think we've got an 18 inch front and a 17 inch rear. So a pretty nice stance to the machine. What we've got in the lights. Nice DRL to the machine as well. Let's get the bike started, see what the other lights are like. Because they look like they're uh, LEDs. Ah, there's your uh, low beam. Ah, oh, now there's a set of lights. <laughs> If you compare that to what I saw earlier on today with the Royal Enfield Meteor, obviously and understandably no comparison. That is some seriously bright light. 
and self-steering uh, handlebars as well. Oh, nice LED look at the back there as well. And the indicators don't stick out too far. It's quite nice. 21 litre fuel tank. The bike told me 80 miles per gallon or 79 miles per gallon earlier. I can't imagine it's going to be able to stick to that in reality. So 320mm front disc, single disc with a four piston Brembo caliper. 260mm disc on the back, two pistons. Twin shocks, um, how adjustable? I can see we've got preload. Anything else? Mm, can't see anything. Wow, isn't that a hell of a get up down there before the bat break? See the uh, uh, master cylinder down there. That is substantial. So a little close up of our engine. You cannot deny it's a handsome looking unit. Well designed, cables nicely rooted and sheathed that I can see. Nothing too ugly. Certainly beats my BMW in that regard. Yeah, all quite nicely um, packaged. Hopefully uh, Guzzi owners will chime in and help uh, explain where I'm going wrong if I'm misunderstanding the bike. But it feels good at six or seven temps. Feels a little bit uh, out of its depth if you go a bit quicker than that. So if you chill out, then I think uh, you'll be in for a nice ride. But now it's time to get the bike back to uh, Fraser the Kloster, who kindly let me out on their demo bike. No sooner had it come in a little few minutes earlier from a previous demo ride. So let's get on a ride. That's not a good way to get out of this little lay-by. Nice steering, uh, steering lock actually. Hold on, let's have a look. Yeah, decent. Could maybe do with a couple of extra degrees left to right, but it's not lacking really. I better tell you about the levers. Clutch, um, quite an early biting point actually, and it doesn't appear to be adjustable down here. No span adjustment that I can see either side. Oh, Brembo master cylinder there though, so uh, that's not to be sniffed at. My left hand is getting a little bit of a workout from the old clutch here. Not too bad though. But if you're a bit um, weak in terms of grip, doing stuff like this for too long, I think would uh, start to uh, ache after a fairly short amount of time. Low speed performance. Um, it feels relatively well balanced. As I slow down a little bit, it just seems a little tricky to keep the front wheel in line. A little bit of weaving to keep the balance and the thumpy kind of uh, nature of the engine just distracts a little bit from careful progress so in summary what uh, don't I like and what do I like about the bike well I gotta say um, I'm not convinced with the handling of this bike. The front forks are unadjustable so you can't do much about that and there just seems to be a bit of a disconnect between what the front end and what the rest of the bike's doing at times, especially when you're pushing on. The other thing I'm not quite a fan of is the vibration, the vibratory nature of the engine. But, you know, that's a personal thing. I'm telling you what I'm not a fan of. <laughs> so I don't like the vibration. I think that's it really. I might as well switch over to the likes. Um, I do like the engine. I do like how torquey it is. And I do like how quick the bike is overall. It seems to be well appointed in terms of uh, electronics for, for the type of bike it is. So in terms of a, a second date, mm, the, the jewel is out. Guzzy guys can chime in and maybe tell me what I'm missing. What I haven't found out about the bike because the ride's been too short. That'll be interesting. And then the bike might well be worthy of uh, another ride. Well, thanks once again to Fraser's for the loan of this demo machine. 
So just get in touch if you fancy uh, finding out for yourself what this bike's all about. Like I said, I have enjoyed aspects of it. The way it fires down the road on, on some smooth asphalt. There is something about the bike that I do like. I can't deny it. Right, I'm off. See you in the comments, folks. Take care. Ta-da!